Can we leverage grand strategy for spiritual warfare in the 21st century? Let's find out. Let's go bold. I'm Scott Patton. Thank you all for joining us today for the Go Bold Podcast. Consider hitting that like, subscribe, and share our buttons. We also really appreciate your comments. We'd love to have your comments. I'd love to engage with uh, uh, our audience. And we'd also appreciate it if you would like and follow our Facebook page at the Go Bold Network. And also on our YouTube page, we really like for you to like and subscribe to that. And we would also like you to check out our website at the Go Bold Network.net. That's the Go Bold Network.net. The greatest strategic danger to the lost is silent and timid Christians. And here at the Go Bold Network, we're going to call out uh, the persecution, the deceptions of Christians in all forms. And we're going to be bold, and we are going to stand up for King Jesus against the cancel and the Marxist culture. Now, to our top stories. Here's the thing, folks. American military strategists and planners are perhaps the greatest uh, strategic planners on earth. Yeah. Now, I say that with a little bit of skewed point of view since I was a, a American military strategist for, oh, I don't know, 34 years of my life and, and went to the Army War College and do a lot of strategy work um, uh, later on in my life. But here's what I want to point out. Imagine a world where we could take parts of grand strategy you know, from military planners and, 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 and strategists and put that from a perspective and leverage the power of the Holy Spirit and also leverage the power of the greatest doctrine ever written. Form that into a grand strategy for spiritual warfare in the 21st century. You know, here's the thing, folks. What we don't realize many times is this is not a chess-like world, so it's not going to just fit all nicely. But I think if we could leverage some principles and we could recognize uh, some grand strategies uh, in order for our spiritual fight, we could glorify God's kingdom. And that's what we want to do. Now, I want to just make sure everybody understands why we need to consider this. Because here's the thing, folks. We never, we never lose control of our lives. We, we lose the delusion yes, that we were ever in control in the first place. Now, Understanding this basic premise, I will just tell you all, um, really can set the conditions on how we can unlock this fight for spiritual wars in the 21st century. Because in reality, folks, this is just going to get harder and harder and harder as we get closer to when King Jesus returns. Now, like I was telling you, I was blessed to be a military strategist for a number of years in all seriousness, and I'm blessed to now be a spiritual warfare uh, strategist for the greatest army in the universe. No, that's not the American army. That's the army of the Lord, and that's King Jesus' army. And I'm blessed to be a spiritual warfare strategist for him as a pastor. Now, let me just say to all you shepherds out there that are serving as pastors right now, and I know that that some days it's very, very hard. But let me encourage you. There is no greater time in the history of the universe right now to be a shepherd, to be a bride for the for the bride of Christ. There's no, it, it, it really applies. But to pastors. But I also want you to know that understanding grand strategy is not just for pastors. It's for for every disciple of Jesus. You see that. That soldier carrying the sword, that was about in biblical times. But one of the things I want to charge you with, and one of the things that the Holy Spirit has put on my heart, is how we can improve our understanding of the grand strategy in spiritual warfare. Folks, I think this is paramount. And I think a lot of times we, 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 we overlook this uh, from a strategy perspective, and, and I think we're missing a lot of gifts that God can give us and can bless us with. And one of the greatest mistakes I believe we make as Christians is not recognizing what an enormous fight we have going on right now. And this this eternity, this enormous um, uh, uh, eternity changing events happening every single day. Because I'm going to tell you something, guys, when you open up God's word, you are watching history unfold. Now, because we have this great doctrine, we can influence this. 
we can influence this with our prayers and our strategies. And many times we're just one decision away of enormous eternity changing events. I want you to let that sink in. Now, indeed, spiritual warfare is intense. It's hard. It's discouraging at times because I'm going to tell you, Satan is going to get his wins at the tactical and operational level. That's why you got to be tough. You got to understand that. And you got to understand that we're in this for the long haul. And that's why Jesus gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, he did. And we, that's what we have to recognize. When the Holy Spirit enters our bodies, the day we become, the day we got saved, and the day we uh, accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we became conscripts. Yes, I said that right. We were drafted to go on offense for King Jesus. That's what we were done. That's why, that's why he just didn't say, be me up, Scotty, and take me to heaven. He has you on this earth for a purpose. And that purpose is very, very, very simple. And that is to expand his kingdom in order to glorify him. And I want you to keep that in the backdrop as we go through this grand strategy. So for the next several weeks here on the Go Bold Podcast, we're going to look at tenets of spiritual warfare through the lens of grand strategy. Now, I want you to make sure everybody understands how these lessons apply to warfare at the spiritual level. Now, as many times as we do on the Go Bold podcast, Scripture drives this. And I was spending some time the other day in 2 Corinthians. And kind of what drove me and what the calling of the Holy Spirit was on this, if you look at this verse and you look at 2 Corinthians 10, 4, where it says, and I'm all in with this verse, by the way, where it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty, and God for pulling down strongholds. Now, when you look at the word carnal, let's just focus on that here just, just briefly. That really means that, that worldly things. So it means like tanks and artillery and guns. And like I've said many times in the Gobo podcast, and I say this in the pulpit, our weapons are not of this world. Now, I want you to watch this, one of my favorite videos. And I've showed this before on a podcast, I believe. And let's just watch some of our great, Ford observers and our great artillerymen and rockets uh, fighting in uh, Ramadi, Iraq. Let's watch it. That was hot. I could watch that video all day. I can remember the first time I saw that. But here's the thing. Even though I would like to, t to, to shoot some precision-guided multi-rocket launcher systems, glimmers, yes, indeed, I would love to shoot those at, at, at our enemies, you know, like Satan and his demons. And I truly believe that in that part of the world in Iraq, and uh, as I said before, I think Satan has garrisoned some demons there full time. But the weapons we use are not the same in spiritual warfare. And I think we have to keep that in context because that's what it says in God's Word. So this carnal or worldly warfare, we're going to use different types of weapons. But here's the thing. Our strategies and how we think can be very prudent in this war. And I think it's prudent and helpful if disciples of Jesus, not just pastors, study and comprehend some basic military strategies and how we can apply those strategies in the spiritual domain. I want you to look at that next uh, picture there, Bible Doctrine. Bring the theology to life. I saw that somewhere on the Internet, and I just thought that was a really cool picture. But it really understands what we're talking about here because this amazing book, this amazing book that we have to be is our sword, and I believe it's the key to understanding spiritual warfare, and it has been. And just as in, in carnal warfare or worldly warfare, understanding doctrine, yes, understanding doctrine can, will drive your strategy. Now, here's the big difference. Our doctrine drives our strategy against Satan and his demons, our doctrine. But there's one gigantic difference that I want you to understand that's different than military doctrine. In many cases in military doctrine, it evolves. So spiritual warfare, it, the doctrine evolves. But I'm going to tell you something. In spiritual warfare, our doctrine has not changed since this beautiful canon was closed. Let that sink in. Our doctrine is set. It's never going to change. You're not going to have an update to, you know, uh, Field Manual 3.0. 
You're not going to have a, a, a new grand strategist uh, write a book like Clodsworth did on, on war. No, huh? This is the book. And, and like in this version, like I, use, I like to use a new King James version, this is God's book, and it's the grandest book of all times. And when we, we understand this doctrine and we live with this doctrine and we have this ingrained in us, it's going to have an enormous impact on the spiritual warfare of whatever level we're fighting at. Indeed, to glorify God and expand his kingdom. And our doctrine is which, by the way, our sword, ho oh, ho are as used in so many rich books in this Bible to fight Satan and his demons. Now, I'll just tell you, a lot of times we just kind of think that the spiritual warfare doctrines uh, are just like in the book of Ephesians or Acts 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and Romans 8. But I will tell you, there is a whole bunch of the Bible that understands grand strategy if we just see it that way. Now, the question becomes, what is grand strategy? I'm going to read you a definition here. And there's a lot of 50-pound heads in the military world that will come that. You'll see everything from Sun Tzu to Lydell Hart to, uh, to Carl von Klodzwitz. But here's one I saw uh, from a more um, contemporary think of the day by a guy named Layton. He has a pretty cool website uh, called uh, The Strategy Bridge, and I looked at that through the day. And this, was not from a, this is from a secular standpoint. This is from a carnal standpoint. But the, the, the definition of grand strategy, and I like this, is grand strategy is the art of developing and applying diverse forms of power in effective and efficient ways to, to purposefully change a relationship between two existing or more intelligent adaptive entities. This is pretty ongoing. You could really apply that to how we are fighting Satan right now. Now, 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 the, now Leighton's definition is for grand strategy in the carnal warfare, but not a spiritual war. But, if I, uh, but I think it's important to understand a couple things. See, when you look at grand strategy, as I've done for a number of years, and trying to fight armies in places like Iraq and, and uh, uh, against North Korea and China and trying to develop strategies and, and how we equip our force and those different things, a strategy constantly revolves uh, around a response to actors Okay, implementing their own uh, countervailing or supporting strategies. Now, let me give you an example of this. Russia ta attacked Ukraine back in 2015, and we gleaned a lot of lessons for that. So what happens when you see these different things, and this always happens in warfare, you see how different our adversaries do things, and then you do counterreactions. Now, in the spiritual domain, we already do this to a very large degree. Now, I want to take you to another part of Scripture, and that's for James chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, Therefore submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. First, every time in the New Testament you see uh, the word therefore, your shields will go up <laughs> really fast. And ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. What is the therefore? Therefore. <laughs> no pun intended. Say that ten times. Everything on the earth revolves around actions, reactions, and counteractions. Guess one entity, and that's Satan. Oh, yes. That's Satan. Defining our enemy is paranoid and this, uh, paramount in the spiritual warfare, and I think most disciples of Jesus already know that, that understand his doctrine and his word, and are led by the Spirit to understand this dynamic. But the second part of Grant's strategy is what levels of warfare are we fighting on? That's the question. What level of warfare are you fighting on? And what level of war that you are fighting for God? What level of war has he called you to fight? Now remember, the day that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you were called in to fight for him. You were drafted into the army of the, of the Lord, and you were drafted to fight in this war. Yes, indeed. From a grad trade's perspective, Grand strategy, there's three specific levels of war that I think we need to understand we need to go over. And this is going to kind of drive our discussion about spiritual warfare in the next several weeks and possibly months because I really want to do a deep dive with you on this. And this is simply this. There are three levels of war, strategic, operational, and tactical. The question becomes, where has God called you to fight? Now, I want you to look at this big, grand PowerPoint slide that I produced just for this podcast. But I'm going to use this 
from time to time. So this is not the last time you're going to see it. But this is how we understand grand strategy when we define the levels of war and spiritual warfare, not carnal, but spiritual. Now, I want you to look at this. It's broke down into strategic and operational and tactical. Now, when we are strategists for the king of the universe, which we all are, if we've been called to be disciples, and some people have different parts of strategy more than others. But let it be known that everything is inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And regardless of what level you're fighting, your task and your purpose doesn't change. Your mission is simple. Expand and glorify him. What are we expanding? We're expanding God's kingdom. Why, why, that's our task, but our purpose, our purpose is to glorify him. Can I get a witness out there somewhere? Just an amen in the comment su section somewhere. We'll do good. You see, God's kingdom, all right, we have two ultimate purposes, and we have to understand those. But the levels of grand strategy and spiritual warfare are strategic, operational, and tactical. Now, let's start with strategic. And I'm not going to delve in too much at strategic level because I've got several podcasts planned for the next in the coming weeks to understand how it works at the strategic level in spiritual warfare. But let me just say this. As the king's court, it's pretty simple. This is where the master of the universe is making his moves. And no, they're not chess-like moves, okay? Because it's different than chess-like moves because we're not fighting a chess-like war. Now, I'm going to talk about that in the next podcast, but here's the thing. Why are we not fighting a chess-like war? And you know, some pastors have compared to that, but I don't. Because God knows the outcome. He knows, he, he already knows where these pieces and his divine sovereignty, he already knows where the Lord Jesus' sovereignty reigns. And this is what you see at the strategic level. This is where the Holy Spirit of God rebukes when he fights, where he moves in order to glorify God and expand his kingdom against Satan and his demons. You see, at the strategic level, this is where the God's army of angels are fighting. Yes. Oh, you like that, that archangel like we talked about the last time. We're going to talk. We're going to spend some more time with, uh, with, uh, with the archangel Michael. Where he is leading God's army, and he is intervening. Yes, and he's fighting. Yes, on our behalf. We just don't know it. I believe this is scary, and I think it's a brutal war. And I think if we could see into that domain, it would scare the living hell out of us. We're not necessarily fighting at this level physically, okay? But here's what I want you to understand. Here's what I want you to understand. You can't have influences on this level. Yes, you can. Yes, I'm talking to you out there. Our doctrinal focus at the strategic level should center on really two books. Now, you can make arguments for some more. You can make arguments for Isaiah and, and some other the prophets. But, man, I'll tell you what. At the strategic level of war for spiritual warfare, the book of Daniel, oh, man, oh, it's pretty tight. And Revelation. Now, next week we're going to do several drill tells on the prophet Daniel because he gives us this incredible look at what's happening prophetically at the strategic level uh, in God's domain. Such that we can't see because God is intervening. But actually, Daniel was fighting on the operational level. But we're showing how God, but you see how God is intervening strategically. And I want you to keep that in mind when we go there next week. So the first one we have is strategic level. Now, the next one I want to highlight here is the operational level war. Now, the operational level war, as you see on that next chart, is the operational level war is where I believe we are probably most vulnerable right now because Satan has seen our past successes at the operational level war. And I think we need to really improve this right now. And if I was looking at this as a planner, uh, this is where I would say, the biggest problem at the operational level right now in the 21st century is Satan loves to target this here. And many times you see this because it's, 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 it's organizations. It's a lot of times it's our denominations. It's their large parts of the denomination, whether it's the Southern Baptist Convention, whether it's PCA, whether it's the Methodist Church, and where you have a bunch of God-fearing people that have good intentions, let me just add. But you see when these, these, these organizations, they get large, they get powerful, and politics start to play, and then Satan starts to creep in. Then he lets personalities and different things happen. You've seen that in the Southern Baptist Convention this last year, where you saw a lot of democratic and socialist and liberal policies kind of start driving the train of the convention and not necessarily 
the gospel. Yes, I said that. And you're seeing that not just with the Baptist church, but you see it with the Catholic church. You see it with the Methodist church. You see it with the, uh, the Presbyterian church. But these worldly things become, become uh, uh, centralized, and we have to look at it. Now, when you just look at the operational level, I'm talking about things like, like uh, international missionary planning strategies and how we send missionaries out, which I'm going to just say, guys. I, I, you know, guys, I've been critical of some things recently of the Southern Baptist Convention, but there is nobody better than the Southern Baptist Convention about sending missionaries. Can I get an amen for somebody out there? And the work that our, our international mission boards have done for the Southern Baptist Convention is just spot on. Now, I've been very, very critical of the North American Mission Board and the Southern Baptist Convention, some decisions they've made, and I think that they've, done, they've gotten too big and too powerful. And I think they've lost focus on a lot of areas. But for the most part, for the last, uh, you know, up until the last probably five or six years, their focus has been very good, and they have planted a lot of church, and they are doing a lot of things to expand the kingdom. But another example of an operational level war would be like disaster relief, um, uh, where we, we're training our disciples at our Christian education institution. That's a whole nother podcast that we need to get to right now. How we can influence, yes, I said this right, how we can influence public policy, like fighting critical race theory and intersectionality. Huh, we hadn't talked about that on the GoBo podcast. How we can enhance religious freedoms, how we can influence all the horrible human trafficking that's happening right now and our border policy, how we have this gigantic fentanyl pandemic that's really uh, being let into our country right now and causing demons to flourish because of the fentanyl drug trade coming in from, yes, I said it, China, and our borders are so open, it's just coming across as fast as the cartels can get them across there. And, guys, that's happening. I just hate to tell you. But, see, these are things that we can influence. We, we as pastors and some entities can influence at the operational level. <laughs> we can. You're going to see this. And I think it's pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the great examples, I think, of, um, you know, the, the Southern Baptist Convention has done some incredible things in disaster relief. I know Franklin Graham has and Samaritan's Purse and a doctrinal emphasis. That's, I think it's beautiful. <coughs> but I also, in my view, I think most of the operational level at this point is centered on a couple of Gospels, really all four of the Gospels, and also in the Book of Romans at the operational level. And this is where we can physically plan and fight and have tremendous amounts of influence for the kingdom of God. But let's look at the next one. <coughs> Let's look at the last one. Spiritual warfare at the tactical level. Now, guys, I'm just going to tell you, this is where most, I would say 90% of the disciples of Jesus are fighting right now. This is where most of us are called to serve. I'm fighting at the tactical level war right now as a pastor. I want you to think of this as a pyramid. So you got the strategic level uh, up here, and this is where God and his angels are. And then you kind of have a... You kind of have, like, a, at the operational level, this is where some of our bigger organizations and where we're using our missionaries and we're doing a whole bunch of other things. And then you're at the tactical level, and this is where the actual fight is. And this is where, if you don't want to get your boots dirty, you need to do some serious prayers because this is where the fight is going to be won or lost, at the tactical level of war. This is where the fight is. This is where we're primarily called to serve. This is where you're going to see this in local churches and local Sunday school teachers and youth pastors and youth coaches. And, and yes, I said this, public school teachers, local fire departments, local police departments. This is also where you're going to have your daily battles with Satan because they're going to be da daily battles. He's going to try to because he Satan spends a lot of time targeting our disciples at the tactical level. Because he doesn't want your influence as a pastor. He doesn't want your influence as a youth director. He doesn't want your influence in volunteering to serve your community. Okay? So he's going to he's gonna try to distract you with individual battles. And this is at the tactical level of war. Again, our mission hasn't changed. Our mission hasn't changed. Our doctrine hasn't changed. We are to expand the kingdom of God in order to what glorify him. Yes, indeed. Now. There are going to be one book at the tactical level that I think trumps everything in the spiritual warfare, and that is the book of Ephesians, hand down. 
Man, what a tool. He gives us so many, man. He just gives us so many tools at the tactical level war through the book of Ephesians when you understand them. How we struggle with God and how we struggle with Satan and evil powers and our sinful nature and the struggle we have between individual Christians and the struggles that we have against the world, the struggles that we have against uh, 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 the, the false prophets, what you're seeing like crazy right now. Where a lot of times uh, uh, the, the disciples of Jesus and the soldiers and the army of the Lord are, are, uh, are struggling with fear and discouragement and hopelessness. But here's the thing, folks. I want you to understand this. Regardless, regardless of what level of warfare you have been called, and we're going we're gonna to dig deep into this for the next several months, I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be well armed with the biblical promises about the authority of King Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you something, guys. When scriptures come alive, you'll see that it's a dwelling laboratory of living a life for King Jesus. That Man, I'll tell you what. Even though that you're going to live in a cruel and a faithless and a secular society uh, with Marxists that are calling you names and calling you out. Just saw that in Portland uh, yesterday where Antifa and Black Lives Matter uh, just, just tortured a, a uh, uh, Christian pastor right there in public. Pushed around his children, sprayed them with uh, mace. His children, yeah. I want you to have bold hope and amazingly accurate prophecies in the future. Because I'm going to tell you guys, a growing number of disciples of King Jesus, especially here in America right now, are now waking up to the, the reality. We don't live in a promised land anymore, guys. And we have to understand how we are going to, we have to have strategy to fight the spiritual warfare. Because what we're going to see, I believe, in the next 50 to 100 years here on earth, we're going to see a more, lot more like Babylon. And many times we forget that, that we as Christians are citizens of heaven first. Sometimes it's really hard to understand that. But we're going to have to keep our conduct honorable. But we're also going to have to understand uh, this, is a, this is probably getting to be a post-Christian Gentile world. The cancel culture, the socialist, the communist part of the Marxist, the pop culture. The LGBTQ, ABCDEFG movement, all those things, that power surrounds us. It's neither convenient nor it's suitable to proclaim the excellencies of Jesus Christ. He has called us now out of the darkness to the light. And here, folks, this is why our focus is going to be on our grand strategy in spiritual warfare. And that's going to be our discernment and our biblical foundation. And I'm going to encourage you to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Join us in our next podcast where we're going to break down the strategic level of war through the book of Daniel. Man, we've got some great things coming on that. So please join us the next time. And God bless you and go bold.